it's a really lonely disease, eh? It's really lonely. Um, and uh, it makes you feel like there's no one else in the world who's going through this. Like I'd go into a room, right? And there'd be TV on and all the words coming out of the TV hit me like bullets. Like they really hurt. And it was like shards of glass through me because they just were so painful to to be hearing these words and everything just sounded like it was attacking me and even physically attacking me. Inside, I was suffering a lot of turmoil because of the split between the way I saw reality, the way I saw things and what actually things were. I'd be sitting on a stoop somewhere and then suddenly I'd realize I was stuck to the cement. Like I couldn't, I couldn't determine where this chair ended and where I began. So I'd be going like this, but this part of my arm wouldn't be moving for me. But you know why? It's because it's the chair. But I didn't really realize that, so I'd be trying to move this part of my arm. And it just wouldn't, it wouldn't pick up, and it was just the grossest feeling. It was like, oh God, I'm so stuck. Well, schizophrenia is uh, definitely now acknowledged to be a biologic illness. And this has really changed in the past uh, couple of decades, particularly, where now I think it's uh, uh, acknowledged overall that it's, it's definitely a physiologic condition. An early diagnosis of schizophrenia is that it doesn't have a typical presentation. So commonly somebody doesn't present with hallucinations or delusions. They'll have problems in terms of feeling uh, strange or feeling uh, weird, but they won't be able to tell you about it. They'll often withdraw because of those feelings, or they'll start having anger or s sadness, moods that you wouldn't have normally seen and you don't understand why. They'll often start doing poorly in school where they may have been a very good student before, or they'll uh, withdraw from sports or other social activities that they would have normally partaken in. And so, therefore, the onus is on the physician to have the skills to build some rapport, to develop a comfort level. Those are the clinical skills you need to collect the clinical information that's so important. The first important thing is to at least have schizophrenia as one of the things that is there, not as the most probable thing, but just simply one of the things to think about. Uh, because as soon as you've at least got it on your list, then there's uh, a likelihood that you look for the specific things uh, that could point uh, towards it being schizophrenia. Response tended to be to put the person off, to delay treatment, and to hope that things would right themselves and go away. And we now know that this is exactly the wrong thing to do, that you can actually make um, a really big difference to the person's prognosis if you begin treatment as early as possible. There certainly is some suggestion that if, if treatment is delayed, um, there may be more permanent and non-reversible changes in the brain. The theory is that psychosis itself may be toxic to the brain. It's not been truly shown that that's the case, but certainly we have shown that over a two-year period, if you find somebody early on in their episode of psychosis, you'll have a much better outcome over that two years than you will if you find somebody later on in their psychosis. If schizophrenia is going to be a disorder that goes on for years and years, then uh, effective treatment has got to be collaboration. Uh, there's got to be a, a, a collaboration between uh, the patient and the family and uh, the professionals, the doctor and the other professionals involved. It's very definitely an illness that I feel hopeful about. Even having worked uh, with it for the past 10 years, I continue to be very hopeful. When I see somebody, particularly early on, that has this condition, I really feel like I have some meaningful things to offer them in terms of uh, both medicine and, and non-medicine treatment to help them to maintain the good things in their life and help them to build on that. I have a lot of hope. I have a lot of, I'm pretty positive about, about my life and, and stuff. So, so to anybody who has a mental illness, I say, yeah, life's still possible.